Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Uh, the other day I got a comment on a video, I think it's where it came from, or Facebook, I don't remember. But Bobby, uh, Bobby wanted to know if I would be willing to do a video on converting an, a 30 amp RV to a 50 amp RV. This is a call that I've got several times over the last couple decades. Um, and and you, I think if, if you're thinking about trying to convert a 30 amp RV to a 50 amp RV, I think you need to ask yourself, what do I hope to accomplish by this? Okay. Uh, because it is, uh, it is going to be, if you're not a do it yourself, you're going to hire somebody to do this for you. It's going to be expensive. Uh, a lot of parts, a lot of labor. And there again, just exactly what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, it's not like you could just snap your fingers and all of a sudden you have a 50 amp RV. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that. And if this is something that you're seriously considered, you also need to ask yourself, you know, you know, you're going to ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish? And can I accomplish this in a different way? Maybe a cheaper way. Okay. Yeah. Let's just get started on this. Cause, uh, uh, yeah, I got some splaining to do. <laughs> I've, uh, crudely drawn out some stuff on the whiteboard behind me. Let's take a look at it and go through it. And at that time, maybe after you watch this video and you think about it a little bit, maybe you'll decide to go a different direction. Okay. So let's get started. All right. Now, like I said, this is, these are just crude drawings. Okay. So here we have a 30 amp system. Okay. Uh, this is going to be most of your uh, travel trailers and, and honestly a lot of travel trailers now are 50 amp but a few years ago most travel trailers were for 30 amp in order to see a 50 amp you would usually have to go to like a fifth wheel or a motorhome but uh, so but there's still a lot of 30 amp RVs out there so this is your receptacle had at your uh, pedestal and you know like if you were in a campground um, You've got a ground, you've got a neutral, and you've got 120 volts, okay? Because a 30 amp system is 120 volts. That's why, you know, I've got several videos uh, that I've done where people have plugged these into a 30 amp, 220 volt outlet. It's not good when it happens. But uh, a 30 amp RV is 120 volts. So you've got like I say, you've got ground neutral and you're hot. And this is your power distribution panel inside your RV. It's where all your 120 volt breakers are at and your 12 volt fuses. Um, so you've got your ground and your neutral come in from the pedestal, hooked to the, the appropriate uh, places inside the power distribution panel. And then you've got your 120 volt AC wire that comes in to your breaker and when that breaker is on, it energizes the rest of your breakers in your power distribution panel. You can do a lot with that. Um, you know, you can run a roof air, you can run a microwave, you can run outlets, uh, you can run your converter. You know, now if you want to add a second air conditioner, that's where you need more power. Okay but i'm not sure trying to convert a 30 amp rv over to 50 amp i don't think that's your only option i think there are other options so let's just really quickly let's take a look at a 50 amp service all right here's your pedestal you've got your ground your neutral again what you've got is two 120 volt contacts inside that receptacle 120 plus 120 equals 240 are too close um, so 50 amp receptacle is wired 240 okay but your RV inside only uses 120 volts so let me show you how they do that so your ground your neutral comes into your power distribution panel and this power distribution panel is typically a little bit larger than a 30 amp what happens is you have one 120 volt leg coming in to one side of a 50 amp breaker a two pole breaker then you have an, the other 120 volt to the other side of that 
50 amp double pole breaker. All that does is splits that circuit into two circuits. All right, so what happens, you know, it comes into this breaker um, and when you turn the breaker on, it powers this half of the breakers in the power distribution panel and it powers this half, two separate halves. You know, that's why RVs with two air conditioners have a 50 amp circuit. So what happens is you will run one AC off of this circuit, one AC off of this circuit. Okay? Because your air conditioners is your, that's your biggest draw in a, in a camper. Um, startup, uh, I think a 15,000 BTU roof air on startup for just a split second will draw like 25 amps. But once it's running, about 12, 13, 14 amps, okay? Um, which is pretty, pretty high draw. So that's why there are 50 amp units and 30 amp units, mostly to run two air conditioners. And of course you can run other things too. Uh, you just have more circuits with 50 amp because you will typically have about twice as many breakers in a 50 amp power distribution panel than you will in a 30 amp. So you can just run a lot more stuff. You can separate things. You can separate uh, circuits. You can run one set of receptacles down one side of the camper in the living room kitchen and you can do another set of receptacles down the other side of the living room kitchen and then you can do a separate receptacles for bedroom and stuff. So it just, it, it breaks the circuits up. Um, you know, if you're wanting to run uh, electric heaters and stuff, uh, a lot of times a 30 amp camper, even in the winter time when you're not running the air conditioner, a lot of times uh, you have trouble trying to run more than one um, electric heater because it's hard to separate the circuits. Because if you could run, if you could plug it into one circuit, you know, one breaker, one circuit, and then plug it into another breaker on a different circuit, you could probably run two. But a lot of times, like I say, a lot of times all the receptacles in a 30 amp unit will be on one breaker. So you can't, you can't separate them. A uh, 50 amp unit, it's a lot easier to run multiple electric heaters. Okay. Now, since we've pretty much determined really about the only reason that you would want to try and convert a 30 amp to 50 amp is to add an air conditioner. Okay. You know, it's, that's can run into a lot of money. Let me, uh, let me erase this, draw some new diagrams and we'll take a look at that. Let's look at a 30 amp RV first. All right. See, so just we simplified the drawing a little bit. So you got your breaker for your air conditioner. Uh, wire comes out of that breaker, runs through the walls, ceiling. You know, it, it's it just it's hidden. Okay, that wire runs from that breaker to your air conditioner. Typically, in a 30 amp unit, the air conditioner will either be in the middle or the rear of the unit. Okay, now let's look at a 50 amp. All right, there again, you got air conditioner one, usually be the rear, main. Air conditioner two will be the front. There again, those wires, you know, run through the walls, through the ceilings. Um, in order for you to convert an RV from 30 to 50 and truly convert it, I mean, you're gonna have to pull down wall panels, ceiling panels, run new wires. Uh, it's not like running new wires in a house. There's just not as much room. There's always that cramped space in an RV that prevents you from doing a lot of things that you could do in a home a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the expense of pulling down, you know, wall panels and ceiling panels, uh, especially, you know, if there's cabinets involved, <laughs> you know, you're just, you're just talking a lot of money because, you know, cabinets have to come out wall panels taken off, you always run the risk of breaking a piece of paneling. You may or may not ever be able to replace that piece of paneling with, with you know, the same color and texture that, that you have. Um, so you're, there's always that risk, no matter how careful you are. Uh, break trim, break a, pan, a piece of paneling. Oh, man, 
God forbid that you break a piece of paneling and you can't can't replace it. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's a big drawback trying to do this conversion. Um, so like I say, this, this wires are out of sight. <laughs> One other thing about this conversion is you're gonna have to change power distribution panels. Typically, these are a, quite a bit bigger than these. The 50 amps bigger than the 30 amp. So, you know, if you, if you decide you're gonna do this no matter what, do you physically have room where this panel box is to make the hole bigger, to put a bigger power distribution panel in there? That's one thing you need to think about. Some of the big drawbacks is, you know, you got a bigger panel uh, to do it properly. You, know, you have to run wires through the walls and ceilings. Uh, is that something you really want to do? Now, let's talk about shore cords because we need to talk about shore cords. So if you have a 30 amp RV, uh, you know, a lot of 30 amp RVs now have a detachable shore cord. Uh, not so long ago, that was pretty uncommon. They all, the shore cord, you know, the 30, 35 foot of shore cord, the wire stuffed in some little cubby hole in the side of the camper. Okay. Uh, that wasn't magic. You just, it just stuffed in that hole. All right. So. If you have a 30 amp RV that has a permanently attached shore cord that just stuffs back in a hole, you're not gonna be able to do that if you convert to a 50 amp because the cord is much larger, much stiffer. Um, so you're gonna have to, you're probably gonna have to do a detachable. So you're gonna have to add, add a receptacle on the outside of the camper, buy a detachable shore cord, and just do away with this cord that goes in the cubby hole. Okay. You know, there again, it's just, just a lot of trouble. <laughs> All righty. Uh, if you, you know, like I say, if you do have a detachable shore cord, you just take out the 30 amp receptacle, put a 50 in, buy a 50 amp uh, shore cord, and that part is done deal. Going back to why would you ever want to convert a 30 amp RV to a 50? probably to add a second air conditioner. All right, here's your alternative. It's definitely gonna be much, much cheaper, still safe, um, and, and maybe a better option, okay? Uh, you know, if you're in a campground, here's, your, here's a pedestal. You know, it's gonna have a 30 amp uh, receptacle. It's gonna have a couple of 15 to 20 amp receptacles. That's just like in your home or in your RV in your wall for your hair dryer. That's a, either a 15 or a 20 amp uh, uh, receptacle. Depends on how heavy the wiring is. And, but anyhow, let's, that's too complicated, but anyhow. Okay, so you got your 30 amp and you're gonna have another smaller receptacle inside your pedestal, okay? Here is the option, okay? Let's say you add an air conditioner to the existing air conditioner, okay? So this air conditioner, the existing air conditioner, is gonna run into your power distribution panel and eventually end up at the air conditioner to run that air conditioner, okay? Here's the alternative. There's a plethora of different ways to do this. Um, is, is just, is just to run another cord from the pedestal to run that extra air conditioner, okay? So you just run a cord to this to this air conditioner. Now, as far as the wiring inside the unit, that depends on you know how you know how much do you want to hide the wire, okay? There again, to run it through the ceiling and the wall, it's still going to be you know tough to do. You're going to have pull ceiling panels, wall panels. They make things called wire hiders, and I have done this. Um, you know, run a, a wire for a second air conditioner, run, run across the ceiling, down the wall, through the floor, um, or into a cabinet, whatever. It just depends on your, your configuration. Um, little plastic uh, guides. And typically, they use them for like uh, AV, TVs, stuff like that, called wire hiders. Uh, they have self-adhesive uh, tape on them 
you cut them the length, pull the tape off, stick it to the ceiling, run your wire through it, snap a little cover over it, and wire's hid. Looks great, you know, I, I think. For me, it would look great. Some people would have a cow. Um, and then you can run it to, they make a 15 amp receptacle uh, with that you can run to the outside of your RV, plug a extension cord into it, plug the other end of the extension cord into your pedestal, boom, you've got a second air. Uh, that for me would be the best alternative. I mean, like I say, some people just wouldn't be able to accept that. Uh, I have done this several times in my career before I had the YouTube channel, so I've never videoed it. Uh, thought I was gonna have one this winter, but uh, guy was adding a third air conditioner because he already had a 50 amp unit with two acs he was going to add a third and we were going to do it like this and his wife decided she didn't want to do that so we didn't do that <laughs> so i didn't get any video uh, but yeah i think to me that this is a good option okay and i mean i've seen people just run an extension cord in the camper and and plug it in I mean, you know, just put a put a end on this this wire coming from the air conditioner and plug an extension cord in it. I've seen people just do this with an extension cord and drag the extension cord out from under the camper, run to the pedestal. Uh, I I don't I don't really think you know that's maybe the best option, but it is an option. So I think that's all I've got to say about this. 30 to 50 amp conversion um, you just really need to think about this long and hard if you're thinking about doing this maybe it's just time to upgrade your RV that's an option too <laughs> but uh, yeah but just people think well hey I've got a 30 amp RV I'd like for it to be 50 you know, somebody can snap their fingers and make that happen. No, no, it's it's a lot more involved than that. So um, that's all I got for this one. So uh, as always, really appreciate y'all watching. If you're watching my video and you have not subscribed yet, please do that. And if you subscribe, ring that notification bell. You'll get notified when I post new videos. And like I always say, I'm going to go up road and fix another one. And uh, y'all have a fantastic day.